Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back to our regular community. My goal is to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love and also gain real wealth in the process. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently trading up 2.51% at 44,706. Ethereum up 1.85% at 31. 32. Just keeping an eye on the top movers, Nia, Rune, Cello, Adam, Luna, Algo, XTZ, EGLD. Let's have a look at the Ethereum tokens. I've hidden knowledge gems throughout this video. Unless you watch to the end, you'll miss them. See how many you can find. We can also see Axie Infinity up well and SHIB, Comp, SNX, CRV. It's really good to take a note of the key performers each day. Rule 774, master yourself to master the market. This is really not taught across YouTube and other social media and media outlets. It's really important to gain a level of mastery of yourself. That's why we talk about real wealth and controlling our emotions. Investing, especially in crypto and trading, is really, really difficult. Mastering yourself depends on your focus. A lot of people focus just purely on the money. They want the security and the freedom and the choice that money brings, and it does bring those things, definitely. The other side to look at is real wealth. Real wealth is much more than money. It's about fulfillment and meaning, fearlessness, inner and outer peace, happiness and gratitude, authenticity. It's about so many different things. There is no need to choose between components of real wealth and financial wealth. You can have both. In fact, you should have both. Rule 150, accumulate real wealth and financial wealth. This is what it's all about in life. You are entitled to the best life that you can possibly have. Rule 150 says there is no choice to make. You can accumulate both. It's important to put money in context. Jim Rowan, an incredible individual. The major value in life is not what you get. The major value in life is what you become. It's absolutely correct. Jim is an amazing individual. And this becoming is what we are about as a community. H. Jackson Brown Jr. said it really well. Remember, the happiest people are not those getting more, but those giving more. Our society focuses on the attainment of money, wealth and power. All those are fantastic, but really they're empty vessels. What creates real meaning in life? are the components of real wealth, all these other things. Having courage and honor, empathy and love, affection and loyalty, being able to forgive, having strength and boundaries, fulfillment and meaning, they're the truly powerful components of life. When people think about giving more, they traditionally think about giving more money. It's actually not that at all. Giving more of yourself by becoming the best version of yourself is your true purpose. There are so many self-improvement courses and programs designed to understand or bring out your true purpose. Your true purpose. You don't need to go to any seminar to understand your true purpose. It's simply to bring out the best version of yourself by acquiring real wealth. Turning to KS Zone Analysis, the four stages that all investors and traders progress through to become consistently profitable and attain real wealth. Zone 1 is the fear zone. That occurs when people are just starting. There's a lot of hope and luck and praying in Zone 1. Zone 2 is when people use courage. Zone 2 is the blame zone. It's fairly interesting that zone two would be the blame zone, but people are getting into a situation where things don't go as anticipated and they look externally. That's very, very fair. After a while, people move into zone three. 
with belief and persistence and zone three is all about patience and rules zone three is characterized by probabilistic fearlessness probability means that things are not certain in zone two people think things are certain in zone three people know things are not certain you can only go with the odds and be fearless about what you do zone four is the meaning zone that's all about inner and outer peace authenticity fulfillment those things those components are the components of real wealth that we talk about every single day in our community Jim Rowan when he made this quote the major value in life is not what you get that's zone three the major value in life is what you become that's zone four H Jackson Brown Jr's quote Remember that the happiest people on earth are not those getting more, that's zone three, but those giving more, that's zone four. Albert Einstein also focused people on zone four. Strive not to be a success, but rather to be of value. <laughs> Bruce Lee also had something to say about it. The more we value things, that's zone one, two, and three, the less we value ourselves that's zone four i say the real wealth is as important as financial wealth the truth is real wealth is probably much more important than financial wealth in actuality having meaning in life is incredibly important it brings out the sunlight in each day no matter how many clouds there are i've been a little under the weather recently and i just want to express my deep affection and love for the beautiful community members who reached out with their well wishes it's really significant to me that gives me an enormous amount of healing and i just want to say thank you thank you to everyone for many years i was a lecturer of first and second year statistics part of my work was to help my students understand media chart analysis a lot of charts tend to circulate around and people can look at them and think that they're absolutely factual. Sometimes they are, and indeed a lot of charts are fantastic in the different ideas that they bring out. Whenever I look at something, I always do media chart analysis. I just wanted to share some of those techniques with you. A member of the community reached out and said, Ken, can you please analyze this article? There was an article that revealed what seems to be a strong correlation between Bitcoin prices and cycles and the Chinese debt market. What we see here is a graph from that particular article, but it's, I did the research and got the original chart. What's fascinating here, you can see the Chinese debt cycle going up, peaking, going down, going up, peaking, going down, going up, peaking. And supposedly this bears a very strong correlation, a strong or seems to bear a strong correlation to Bitcoin's price action. Having, having a look at that, what do you think? Do you think, oh, this is peaking out. The Chinese debt cycle is blowing off. Oh, and now it's coming down. Does that mean Bitcoin is coming down? And I see this, oh my goodness, it's true. I should sell everything. Do you think that when you look at this? Another thing that I found really interesting, the author, when he put out this work, he, he basically said, oh, I never believed that this would become an article. He was just looking at different things. And that's really, really important to look at different things. The more things that we look at, the more intelligence that we gather, the better our triangulation is. That same author retweeted this and I thought it was really funny. I wanted to share it with you. This is Chad and this is Chad the country. Is Chad actually Chad? Is this where he came from? What do you think? Is this a one-to-one -one comparison? When I look at media chart analysis, I basically rip everything to pieces. I'll show you what I see. <laughs> this is what I see with Chad. Certainly there is a area of 
comparison definitely in this place but if we look at chad i think we need to elongate his face out a bit and you know it's not quite chad it's a bit of chad now when we look at this analysis this is what i see i first initially look to every peak not the the ones that just line up i want to know if everything is lining up i start down here and then I push this up, the most recent activity first. This is around the middle of that cycle. I look here, to be predictive, everything must align. Here, I look up, it's about mid-cycle. Here, I look up from this peak in Bitcoin's price action. It's higher. And here, I look at this peak, well, it's down the bottom. The important thing to understand Correlation is a, an association between two variables. It ranges from zero, which is no correlation, to either positive one or negative one. And we can do a coefficient of determination, R squared, not R2D2, but R squared to determine the basic adherence of data points to a specific line. What we can see here is there, of course, is a degree of correlation but it's not really that strong. Also, the thing to note, this author did create very good work and it's really good to look in to the debt cycles. Ray Dalio has built a whole career on that and Ray is a very, very smart guy. The concept, the media can look at something and say, there seems to be a strong correlation. The word seems very much dilutes the word strong just look out for certain wording as well. Another piece of really fascinating analysis was done by a community member looking at the T-bond futures and saying, okay, we had tops here and here in Bitcoin. And then there was this that happened and then the bear market came and we had tops and we had, it's really, really fascinating analysis. What I do, I always honor any analysis that is done. It's always good. Everything that advances knowledge in any which way possible is fantastic. Well done. When I look here, this person is saying, okay, do we have this particular three month circle here, this cycle peak? Don't forget this is T-bond futures on the one month chart. It therefore hides quite a lot of data underneath it. What I do is that I go back and analyze things independently. I'll tell you what I see. I first of all go back to the KS model and then I overlay those T-bond futures. This is on a daily basis. So it's realistically showing a lot more depth of information because I need to see what's happening under the hood and how predictive different things are. We talk about bonds all the time on the channel. They're incredibly important to look at. When we look on a daily basis, we need to go back and understand how things played out. Here in the 2012 halving cycle, we had a peak at point one. At point two, we can see the T-bond futures were very low. In fact, about their lowest. When we go to the 2016 halving cycle, the peak is here. The T-bond futures are here at 0.5, not at the bottom, which was the previous cycle at there. So two and four don't compare to each other. Now, when we go across to the current price action, we can see the only point of reference is a comparison from the top to the top. I'm just trying to take you through the way that I look at information so that I can pass this information and these particular ways that I look across to yourself, knowledge transfer. So when you look here at this peak, we have to go back and compare this peak. Now what's happening here? When we compare this peak down, we see that it's quite before the peak of Bitcoin. So if we draw a tight resistance line through there and we see it's cutting from six to seven and then there is a degree of upward momentum and then the bonds start to fail, which there's a degree of consolidation underneath this 0.5. 
we come and do the same thing on the current cycle, drawing a very tight line. And I could have drawn it out from peak to peak, but that would draw a line down here. I don't think that's representative. I think this more is more representative, but it could be done out further. So I'm just doing a really tight analysis on this. Drawing from nine to 10, we can see that we're starting to get over that line. Now, what does it mean? We go back to here. We're starting to get, it's gone up and down in the previous cycle, up and down. So we're about here. That means that we've got a bit of time to play out if this correlation is correct and bonds are really important, no question about it. The thing is, where are we literally? This has us before the un current on-chain metrics around July. The on-chain metrics point us to about here. These T-bond futures point us to months earlier. That's really, really interesting. It's fantastic work. And if we project that line forward, we could see there will be an upward momentum in bond prices, followed by a collapse down. Upward momentum, followed by a collapse down, which maybe can coincide with the anticipated May of 2022 level. The most important thing, and you will see this time and time again, in on-chain data analytics. I look at on-chain data. There's a lot of on-chain data that I look at that there is clearly no association between price and the on-chain data itself. I'm doing this analysis to try and help you to gain skills and how you can look at patterns underneath the hood. That's why I do so much work in pattern recognition with you as well. Maybe the concept, when you are presented with a chart, just think about doing media chart analysis on it. And if you are unsure how to do that, you can always reach out and directly message me on Twitter is preferable at any stage. I'm always very, very happy to help out. Turning to investment substitutability, over the past 12 months, the S&P 500, the proxy for stocks, is up 35%. Gold is down 8%. Bitcoin is up 327%. Turning to the KS model, a crypto technical trading model based on institutional price psychology, we can see at the current point of Bitcoin's momentum, we are in the bull market. We're not in a bear market. There's been a little bit of turbulence, the Evergrande situation, and the excess liquidity blow-off have been impacting Bitcoin's price, as did the excess money printing, which drove up the price of Bitcoin exponentially. I believe that what we're seeing now is an evening out of everything. It's normalized. So the excess liquidity has been blown out of the market and the market is on its way to the moon, just like this. We're currently in this position, this pointing arrow of the actual previous cycle. We can expect much higher prices and an explosive blow off top. Why can we expect that? Because it's always happened. And why should we expect that because it's always happened, it will happen again? It's kind of like looking at the sun setting. Well, it's always done it until it does something else. Then we'll talk about that. But for now, we'll just go with the trend. Let's zoom into the KS model on the current price action. We can see that we increased in price over the past, well, over 49 days from the low, nearly 81%. Over the past, well, let me just change this. We've decreased 25.27% over the last 15 days, we can see a retracement, but the thing we should always keep in mind is the playing out of resistance. We have resistance coming through just below the current price. We could say that that has been turned to support, but I think it's pretty early days. We also have this downward playing resistance that is going to put negative price pressure when price comes up to touch that line. 
we also have a degree of upward resistance playing in at the 46.513 mark. I'll just give you the actual levels. Bitcoin is currently trading at 44.854. It is literally just past the resistance there. We have a higher level of key resistance at 46.513. We've got very good support at 42.970 and 47.10. When price gets above to this particular resistance line, 48.337, it's looking really good. A lot of technical damage will have been repaired at this point. And the next target will be 52.989. Above 52.989, we expect fireworks. You can also notice that the relative strength is coming back into the market, but it's hitting a level of resistance. That means a lot of sellers could enter the market, seek to drive the price down to a consolidation level, for example, 42.970, and then increase the momentum inside Bitcoin to take out this key resistance. Price is always moving in a wave. Going back to the previous cycle, the 2016 bull run, we can see that we're roughly around this particular point of time. There's still quite a way to go and there will be explosive price movements, but always prepare yourself for 40, 30% drawdowns, even 50% drawdowns. It's really important to get psychologically prepared. Crypto is one investment medium as are stocks and bonds. Of course, we have many other investment vehicles, such as real estate and all sorts of other things. The stock market at the end of 2020 was around 95 trillion globally. The bond market around the same period of time was 128 trillion. Crypto is incredibly tiny. If 10% of the stock market funds from a year ago came into crypto and 10% of bonds came into crypto, the crypto market cap would be twice that of gold. Looking across global stock markets, we can see Japan was the only market that was literally down. There were a couple of others, such as Greece, but ma majority of stock markets were doing very, very well. In the past session of the US market, Energy and financials led the charge. The lowest, the worst performing sectors were real estate and utilities. We can see the VIX, the fear gauge of the market came down. And what I mentioned previously, when we have a quadruple witching event, it's very common for volatility to spike up very quickly. And it's also likely that volatility collapses quickly. I used to trade the VIX. The VIX is an animal. It's very, very volatile. Maybe that explains why I like crypto so much. One thing that I would like to bring to your attention is this potential upward trend line. We don't want the VIX to get above 21 or 22. We want it to come back, but we see there is a natural support level playing out around the 16.5 mark. Just like in crypto, as in the stock market, when fear goes up, the stock market tends to go down. When fear decreases, the stock market tends to go up. That's why I inverse the VIX on all the charts that I show you, because it tends to show market direction. I've made the inverse VIX more highlighted. I traditionally decrease the transparency of this just to a background but I wanted to show you how much the inverse VIX actually can help us predict price movements. It's pretty good. We can see that a lot of fear has been leaving the market in terms of the inverse VIX and what is happening to prices, what is happening to Bitcoin, to the NASDAQ, to the S&P 500, Dow Jones, Russell 2000. They're all improving in price. It's really important to gauge and monitor fear in markets. That's because psychology, crowd psychology determines price. 
Rule 109, Enhanced Pattern Recognition. Let's have a look at the technical repair of the NASDAQ. We talked about this yesterday and I mentioned that Bitcoin was following the NASDAQ. I've just brought out Bitcoin's fingerprint more fully so you can see more effectively. We can see Bitcoin was coming down. Notice this peak in Bitcoin's price action. It occurred before the stock market peaked in the NASDAQ. That is really important to understand. This is a real gem. Bitcoin is hit first. That's why we need to look at stock market data. If the stock market is weakening, Bitcoin will be hit first. It's really, really important to know. What we see here is the NASDAQ recovering. So why don't I look at the S&P 500 or something else? The NASDAQ is the technology index. The NASDAQ is what most correlates to Bitcoin. It also hits Bitcoin first because Bitcoin is highly speculative. It has incredibly wide percentage movements. That means smart money typically gets out quickly. We just need to keep our eye on so many things. When we were talking yesterday, I was talking and showing you the different repairs that occurred at different times. We can see that price has managed to break this resistance, come up. It's getting close to this resistance up here at 15,374. Now, when it hits that, it's highly likely the price will move in a wave down. The probability would suggest that. There's also a lot of negative news. Now, news by itself is pretty much always negative, but we have to just keep aware of different things that are happening in the world. It could be possible for the NASDAQ to hit this resistance line and just go straight through it, like what happened previously. However, we've had a degree of downward momentum here. So maybe these past peaks may give us an understanding as to what may happen. It's quite possible that the NASDAQ and of course Bitcoin, so think about the moving in sync, could hit this resistance, come down, hit this support, hit resistance, try to get over it, maybe not, comes down, consolidates around here and then takes out that. That is one potential scenario another scenario and we just always look at price action in the reality it could hit this resistance turn it to support and blast through the next level of resistance if it does that will be the previous high around 15,700 just to keep in mind we always just follow price action we're looking at the probability the probability is that we've had many days of downward pressure. We didn't have many days here or here. We had many days here and many more days here. The longer the downward pressure, the higher the time or the longer it takes to repair that damage. Just keep those things in mind. Having a look at the bond market and we analyzed a long view a look at the bond market it's really really important to do so so any analysis about bonds is really important we can see that the bond futures and all the other bonds that we're tracking we're tracking about 13 bonds at the moment they all are coming down this is very very good news for us if bonds rally across resistance if they shoot up the wall that is the sign of a potential impending crash basically we have to keep our eye on so many other variables but we always keep an awareness on the bond market so this downward action is looking really good there is a potential that bond prices are going to resume downwards but we just don't say that just yet. The stock market is like watching grass grow. It plays out so slowly compared to crypto. Bond yields move inversely to bond prices. We can see the 30 year is starting to repair, but it's still under a degree of pressure here. 
For that reason, we don't say everything is all fine in the markets. We need to just wait and see, but we can see the 30 year is doing what we want it to do. Basically, that is go up. We want the yields to increase. That means greed. If they collapse, that means fear. If they drop like a brick, that means a substantial correction. I hope these things help. I'd like to do some media chart analysis with you. This is the DXY, the US dollar currency index, compared to Bitcoin. Of course, we compare everything to Bitcoin and the VIX, the US stock market fear index. What do you notice between the association of the VIX and the DXY? What happens? This is not the inverse VIX. This is actual VIX. So what this VIX is saying, a spike in fear. What does the dollar do? A subsiding of fear. What does the dollar do? An increase of fear. What does the dollar do? A decreasing of fear. What is the dollar doing? Increasing fear. What does the dollar do? Decreasing fear. What does the DXY do? And is this a, a relationship that we can go backwards and see the peaks? For example, the peak here. Is that the peak there? The peak here. Is that the peak there? Peak here? There? Peak there? Ha! Huh. Starting to become interesting. As you can see with statistical analysis, things can phase in and phase out of correlation. They do it all the time. I call it the indicator concept. Basically, you're in your car or you're on your motorbike and you're turning left and there's a car in front of you. Your indicators go together and then they become dephased. We get phasing and dephasing all the time in financial markets. I've been involved with financial markets for more than 30 years. I've seen a lot of things. Dephasing is one of them. It's really important when you read economic news not to be too swayed by what people say. If you gain the skills of pattern recognition, you can simply look at the chart yourself and break it down from a statistical perspective. There is a lot of in-sync phasing correlation in this immediate price action. But what about going backwards? Is, does it still hold? Let's go back to around the start of December in 2020. We see the fear index spiking. What is the dollar doing? Well, it's not spiking. It spikes around there. The fear index spikes. What is the dollar doing? It's coming up. But now the fear index is lowering, but the dollar DXY is going up. You have to be really careful about what the media tells you. Basically, when there, when there are relationships between different variables, they tend to sink in and out. That's why solid rules and less mathematically provable, such as bond yields and bond prices, they move inversely to each other. That's just a factor of mathematics. But many other things do not. For example, the DXY, we can see it topping up when fear is at its lowest. And that is a really, really important thing to note. This is a very much hidden gem. It took me many, many years to understand that what the media tells us and what the price actually does are two fundamentally different things. That's why I'm not a great fan of covering news on this station. I know that many people devote their life to understanding their, the news of the financial markets. That is fine. If there is an edge there, that's all good. I found that actually covering pure price action is far more effective. Please let me know in the comments have you followed the news and it's bitten you or have you followed the news and it has helped and how much is it a consistent basis you follow the news and it's all good you go with the news and it's really helpful or have you found the opposite i'm really fascinated i'd love to let you explore that as a community please let me know in the comments turning to bitcoin and the metals what we look at is Bitcoin is coming down at the moment, as is gold, as is silver. The inverse DXY is also coming down. 
copper and platinum are coming down. Palladium are, is coming down. We can see a degree of association, but we always say, okay, we can see it at the moment. That just might be phasing, synchronization. We don't hold too much sway in things. We let price reveal itself to us. What we've seen here, we've got a slight uptick in gold and a slight uptick in silver, but gold and silver are still under duress. If you were to do your pattern recognition here on gold and draw a line of resistance, you can see negative air here with gold. That's not good for gold at the moment. Doesn't mean it won't repair. It just means it's not so good. We can see drawing a line on silver. It's still under resistance as well. Let's do the same thing for Bitcoin. If we look at that resistance, what do we see? Bitcoin is still under resistance as well. Looking at Bitcoin and comparing to the airlines and transportation indexes, we can see the airlines index has been rallying recently. If we look at this very heavy white line, we can see it's overcome resistance and shot through. It's on the repair. Fantastic. Oh, that's going to make so many people happy in the airline industry. Well done. We look at the transport indexes. They're all starting to recover. We can see a potential crossing of resistance. That's why I love to teach you all about pattern recognition, understanding how pattern recognition works and being able to look at a chart gives you so much power compared to the average person. Let's apply some pattern recognition. I've just taken the background information so we can focus just on the airline index. What do we see here with your eye? If you drew, for example, a resistance line to here to this peak, you can already see that airlines were starting to recover. Now let's draw it to this peak and get an understanding of a tight resistance line. The airlines were starting to recover up here. Let's draw it to this line. That's a much looser resistance line. We can see a breakout, a retest and a resumption of the airline index has confirmed an upward move. This is the skill and the power of being able to look at a chart just with your naked eye. Ooh, how naughty. With your eye and just see how things are changing. I hope this helps. It's a really fantastic skill to develop. Let's compare Bitcoin to Brent oil and crude oil. The question is, why are we doing this? You can say, Ken, what are you doing this for? Why don't we just get into Bitcoin and crypto? Well, the real issue is if there is a problem in the market, Bitcoin will feel it first. We have to look at so many different triangulations to make sure the market is healthy. For example, in the last crash, Brent oil and crude oil started to show weakness long before the market crashed. And when the market crashed, Brent and crude fell off a cliff. One went negative. It's really important to understand the direction because that gives us confidence about what is happening. We can see Brent and crude on an uptrend and they have crossed quite a degree of resistance. Comparing Bitcoin to inflation expectations, we can see with the fear coming out of the market, inflation is increasing again. Naughty inflation. But what else can we tell from this diagram? Let's do some pattern recognition. Let's do some <gasps> naked eye assessment. When we look at drawing from this peak to this peak down, what do we see? Inflation is still under pressure. What about this peak? Inflation is still trading below that inflation. Now, what do we see? It is really interesting that inflation is actually on a downtrend. We've got a slight reversal. It's coming up in terms, but does it get rejected? These are all things that I see. I'd love to share them with you and help you out. 
Looking at the bond market, we saw before the previous crash that bonds were going up exponentially, like literally taking off before the market crashed. When the market crashed, it, it took everything with it as it always does. What we've done here is to draw a red area like this. If bonds get above this tight resistance line, and we've done a tight line here, and get into this red area, we need to think about what could be coming next. And always understand that crypto gets hit first and it gets hit hard, but it also recovers more quickly than anything else. It recovers fastest. What we see here in the current price action is a rejection from that resistance. It was trying to get above, but it's actually been rejected down. Let's keep our eye on things, but this is a really, really positive sign. Comparing Bitcoin to public companies with Bitcoin exposure, the leaders, Hut8 Mining Corporation out in front, followed by Bit Digital, Bitcoin, Marathon Digital, Hive Blockchain, Bitfarms Limited, MicroStrategy, Galaxy Digital, Coinbase Global, Argo Blockchain, Silvergate Capital Corporation, ADE, the Bitcoin Group SE, Riot Blockchain, and Voyager Digital. Comparing Bitcoin to Bitcoin ETFs, we can see Grayscale Digital Large Cap Fund out in front, followed by CI Galaxy Bitcoin ETF, then Nine Point Bitcoin ETF, 3IQ CoinShares Bitcoin ETF, Purpose Bitcoin ETF, EBIT the Bitcoin ETF, and then Bitcoin. Underneath Bitcoin, QBTC the Bitcoin Fund Canada, 21XB, 21 shares Bitcoin ETP, BitW, Bitwise 10 Crypto, BitC, CoinShares Physical Bitcoin, GBTC, Grayscale, Bitcoin Trust, and OBTC, Osprey, Bitcoin Trust. You can see Osprey Bitcoin Trust has been a laggard throughout the entire market. Poor Osprey. Let's now zoom in using rule 172. We're going to look at Bitcoin Ethereum, the top eight. Looking at Bitcoin's technical analysis, Bitcoin is currently trading at 44,693. Just at this area, we can see there's a level of resistance playing at the 45,000 psychological mark. We also can see that there's a good level of support at 43,685. We've overcome just presently a resistance level, a tight resistance level. We'll see how that plays out with the 45,000. We also have this key level of resistance coming down, which will strike at around 46,566. When we get above 47,206, technical repair would have occurred. Then we need to challenge all of this overhead resistance. The 50,000 key level and the 52658 level. Basically, when we get to 52658, Bitcoin should rock and roll and get on its rocket and yeehaw. We always know the price is negatively biased and we have inside our community, no fear of missing out. So we look at lower levels to layer by. We've got current support at 43685. 43, 249, 42, 803, 42, 380. And then at the 4741, we've got a lot of support. Also at the 39, 235 mark. I believe right now the NASDAQ and Bitcoin are intimately tied up in a bit of a dance. What the NASDAQ does will impact Bitcoin. Let's see if that plays out. They're basically coinciding, they're phasing in together. They were phased out previously. They seem to be phased in right now. Let's just have a look at how that plays out. I've given you, hopefully, a lot of skills to be able to determine what is coming next and how to interpret the price data when it does happen. Looking at Ethereum's price action, Ethereum continues to be a powerhouse. Look at this fantastic movement. 
Ethereum currently trading at 3130. It's overcome this resistance, critical resistance that it needed to get above. It's doing really, really well. Ethereum strength is really quite impressive. If Ethereum retraces back to its once resistance now turned to support line, it could do so around the 3040 mark or 2988 mark. We know the price is always negatively biased and we need to keep our eye on the NASDAQ. If the NASDAQ hits resistance and retraces, it is quite possible that we could see prices come down to the 2609 level or even 2387. The key thing that we're looking for is Ethereum's price to get above these blue lines. This blue resistance, structural resistance line would come into play at around 3390. Also, we have the absolute key 3649 level. At 3649, when price is above 3649, we expect Ethereum to just take off, but we never FOMO. It's always important to understand price is always moving in a wave, going up and down, but this is looking pretty, pretty nice. Some people advise others to go all in. I never ever do that. It's really important to manage your risk. A lot of people were saying go all in at the top of the market when the fear gauge was registering extreme greed. We never want to do that. You can use the fear gauge as a buying technique. A lot of people talk about dollar cost averaging in at a certain time during the month. I think this is incredibly bad advice. Really what you want to do is to dollar cost average in when fear is really as extreme as you can get. Now that's not easy. You can potentially say when fear is under 35, I will dollar cost average in. That is always a really nice way to go. The lower the price, well, the lower the amount of greed in the market, the more that you have professionals stepping in to buy and correct technical damage. Today's number is 33. Basically, the lower the fear reading, the better it is in terms of buying. We're in the bull market. It is okay to catch falling knives. In fact, it is the most profitable way of doing just about anything in crypto in this particular cycle. Other people use the greed and fear index to scale out of trades. For example, when the crypto fear and greed index gets above 60 or 70 or climbs even higher, that could be an indication to some people to take some profit. As always, it totally depends on yourself and what you want to do and your goals. But I hope this little bit of insight has been helpful. Turning to crypto total market cap, the total market is currently over $2 trillion. It's 2.033 trillion. We can see this level of support was broken because of this overhead resistance that we talked about yesterday. That pushed price down. We had another level of resistance, but it was overcome and pushed through this. This is the entire market. The good thing about looking at this is that you can tell what your cryptos may be doing. You can see here Bitcoin's fingerprint playing out in the background. Bitcoin and all cryptos have an undeniable direct correlation in terms of movement. As Bitcoin moves up, the entire market, over 12,000 cryptos move up. When Bitcoin moves down, over 12,000 cryptos move down. Now, we do get exceptions to the rule. Of course, with every rule, there's always an exception. The problem is Bitcoin has a gravity. And when I say no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity, that particular rule, that is all about the alts then being sucked back to Bitcoin's gravity. We have to be really careful when they diverge. They tend to be pulled back very sharply. 
that's another little gem. I hope it helps. When we look at the technical action across the entire crypto market, we would expect that the entire crypto market would find support around this level. And you can just keep this in mind when we start to dig more deeply into specific cryptos. It could go down a little. Of course, it could go down whatever it goes down. I think it really depends on what the NASDAQ does right now. Let's continue on with rule 109, enhanced pattern recognition. We went through the top eight in the last episode. We can see Bitcoin is still below resistance, but it's overcome, it's gaining support at this key level. What is happening with ETH? With Ethereum, it's still under resistance and it's under this key support, but it's now resistance for Ethereum. What about Cardano, ADA? ADA is really acting very strongly, but it's just at that critical support slash resistance level. It's just under resistance right now, and it's under resistance above. What does this really tell us? What does this mean? When things are under resistance, they typically require another wave to consolidate and push up. This is quite uh, often the case. You can see here with ADA, if we zoom in here, we overcame this resistance. We're trying to get up to this resistance level at 234. What happened? We were pushed back underneath this support line down to about 220, and then it rallied up to try and take out this resistance at 234. We have resistance above coming in at about 245. It's really interesting to look in this manner. It gives you so much power. Looking at Binance Coin, Binance Coin is seeking to overcome resistance. It's doing far more effective work at overcoming resistance than ADA, Bitcoin and Ethereum currently. We look at XRP. XRP has overcome this first level of resistance, turned it to support, got up to the second more significant level of resistance. It's just hovering around there right now. The critical key point to look out for, the key resistance level is 1.0415. That is a key for XRP to get above. Then I believe it's a bit of party time. For Doge, Doge is under key resistance at 23.16. It's behaving strongly. It's recovered well off the lows, found support, broken through, retested, resumed up. It's seeking to take the 23.16 level out at the moment. In the top eight, look at how strong DOT is. Polkadot is so strong. It had this set primary level of resistance turned it to support and then broke through the next level of resistance, turned it through to support and then retested. It's seeking to get above that key 32.89 or 32.81 resistance level and make that a support. We can see it's also got very nice upward support as well. We need to keep our eye on so many things, but DOT is clearly the winner in terms of these top cryptos right now. We can see Sol, what's happening with Sol? It overcame this level of resistance and did so really strongly, but hit the level of resistance we thought would play in at 152.69. It's just seeking to consolidate to get above that. It's currently 148.18. It's so close to doing it. As a bonus, let's do eight more. Let's have a look at VRA, Veracity. What do we notice here? What's poking out? If we draw a tight resistance line down here, what are we seeing here? We're seeing that this resistance was turned to support, but the entire market's been dragged down. It's seeking to overcome that level. Now, what could we do next? There's a couple of things. We could actually copy that line, parallel it out to see if it's overcoming. And we can see that 
another way to do it is that we can look at this peak here and draw a resistance line, a tight resistance line, which is more effective. Currently VRA is literally at that resistance line. Let's have a look at Matic, which is a community favorite. We can draw a tight resistance line through here. We can see that the current price of 1213 is above that resistance line. It's seeking to repair. How, a, how about MTV? Everybody wants their MTV. We can see that there's a really good support line and we can make it tighter if we wish or looser if we wish. I quite like tight lines. Now, why do I like the tight? Because it gives us a rapid indication of price change. That's really good. The faster you can get information on how price is changing, the better. Let's have a look at Phantom. Phantom, you can do this in so many ways. For example, if we drew a line down here, we can see it's just too far away from current price action. What about, for example, if we drew a line through here? Just from this peak to this peak downwards, we can see price has been hovering around that particular line. Phantom is really, really choppy. FTM is not giving us a lot of direction. However, it's actually saying something interesting inside this chart. For example, if I was to draw a horizontal line here at this level, we can see we've got a lot of touches and it's been really well respected. Hence, the 1, 2381 level is quite important in Phantom. Why don't we do that for the other ones? We can see here with Veracity, VRA, basically the current price is really key. And we can see that as well in Matic. Literally the current price is on that particular area. It gets a little bit harder with Multivac. But we can see basically the current price is the, is the key area. It, we can see this playing out across the space. What about Chainlink? Chainlink, not so much the current price. We've probably got a bit more of solid support and resistance through here. So we can see it's just under. Now, what about Icon? Icon is a real community favorite. We can see that price has been respecting these levels quite well. We could even move it down a little. Icon is looking really good. Now, what about that VChain? We can see VChain is quite a degree higher than the current price. We're just seeking to draw only one line at the moment. We can see on Monero that the current price is basically the support level. Now let's go back to drawing trend lines. So what is happening with Chainlink? If we draw a tight line, tr tight resistance line here, that really doesn't tell us that much. That's removed from price action. So we can see another area here. We can lift that up and just make it tight. And we can see through here, I'm focusing on this area, not this area. I never try to make a trend line meet the current price action. I don't care about the current price action. I care about what other traders, investors will see in the price action. It's quite a good way to go. We can see that this is quite a good line. We've had a breakout, a retest, a resumption. Now what's happening here? At 26.32, we've got a lot of upward resistance. We would expect the chain link could need a bit of effort to try and break through that 26.32. It may come down and consolidate around the 24.48 level, gain a base and then shoot through. But as we know with crypto, it depends what Bitcoin does as well. Let's have a look at Icon. Icon drawing a tight resistance line through here is pretty good. We can see that Icon is over to the other side of that resistance 
and it's taken off from the key resistance level of 1602. It's currently trading at 1706. This is really good price action. Let's have a look at VET. So VET, drawing a tight line through VET's price action. Again, we're going from around the top through this area and now just extending the line. Don't forget, you can draw lines any way you want. You're an artist. Just go with what you think is best. Over time, you will understand what works and what doesn't. We can see for VET, we've got a degree of consolidation above resistance. That's fantastic. We really need to take out this key level at 11180. That's the key one that we want to overcome. What about Monero? What's Monero up to? What's Monero doing? We can see Monero has taken a quite a substantial hit here in terms of price volatility. We need to see that's because it's so steep, it's not a good line. We would therefore try and draw another line. Now, this line through here could offer some assistance. Even though it's a little bit away from that peak, it gives some degree of assistance as to what may support Monero's price when it comes down. And we know price is always moving in a wave. We're never concerned as to price fluctuations because we know as price moves in a wave, it's the absolute best opportunity to get in and lower your average buy price. I would imagine we'll find support on XMR Monero or Monaro at around the 233 mark. With that, we'll just take a quick look through the market for strength and direction. Looking at the stablecoin supply ratio SSR oscillator, we can see that money, stablecoins are flowing in and being converted to Bitcoin, but we've had a bit of a leg down. We know total open interest across all exchanges is very well correlated with price. Currently about $13.9 billion in futures open interest. What's the current figure? The current figure is higher. 14.22 billion, that's even better. Liquidations across the past 24 hours, 167 million occurring across about 45,000 traders. Over the past 12 hours, nearly 71% of liquidations were short. We can see that we had a lot of liquidations four days ago, but they are decreasing. Currently, we're only, we're in very, very low trading volume. Going back a couple of days, about 70 million in longs, 150 in shorts, 400, 450 million approximately in long liquidations, about 200 million in shorts. The day before, about 612 million in longs and 142 million in shorts. The stablecoin tether is really important to check its health. It is effectively the oil that is used in the crypto industry. We can see open interest is around 106 million, absolutely nothing. And we can see open interest in the traditional futures is also absolutely nothing. This is important for us to understand. If there is a problem with USDT, for example, if the Department of Justice goes after Tether and says your commercial paper is not backing your reserves, we could have a de-pegging in Tether, which would mean that the price of Tether would fall from a dollar to say 50 cents. That means that we would get an enormous amount of open interest in here to take advantage of the fact that Tether could fall. Just to give you an understanding, Tether has a market cap of $68.7 billion. It's big. So we would expect tens of billions of dollars to flow into the futures market to go short. We see absolutely nothing like that. I had a comment about how do I interpret this? I hope that's helped. Turning to Bitcoin options, 
four options expiring at the end of the month. Well, we've got one more day, but September 24th was the key one. We've got total open interest, 64,525.1. The max pain price where the majority of the options expire worthless is currently 44,000. And the put call ratio is 0.54. Turning now to Ethereum options, four contracts expiring at the end of the month. Total open interest, 465626. Max pain price, 2880. And the put call ratio, 0.69. Coin market cap is working today in terms of the 24 hour and seven day percent gainers. So we can look at it. Total number of cryptos in the market, over 12,000. In fact, 12,064. Congrats. Let's have a look at the top gainers or the top cryptos bitcoin ethereum cardano tether binance coin xrp solana polkadot usdc and doge let's have a look at the greatest gainers over the past 24 hours arweave luna adam perp phantom iost avax tezos hbar and mana let's have a look at the greatest seven day percent gainers cello avax adam omg shib audio and stable coins what about the greatest losses over the past 24 hours stable coins mm, interesting let's look at the greatest losses over the past seven days sushi swap synthetics zen curve tell Aave, Rune, Waves, Link, and HBAR. Turning to Binance Derivatives, 24-hour trading volume 61.6 billion and 24-hour open interest 8.5 billion. We can see the change in the cost of the contract, the derivatives contract, 2.8% increase for Bitcoin, currently ETH 1.8% or 1.9%. We're seeing that Bitcoin has more price pressure, upward price pressure, than Ethereum does. Let's look down a little further. Let's look at the other perpetuals, the other futures. Out on top, Cody, Seller, Ren, CVC, Rune, Reserve Riot, RSR, Near, XTZ, CRV, Carva, and One, all above 10%. Let's flick the other way. When we see negatives, we're not seeing anything greater than negative 10%. I'd like to thank our incredible community members who have done so many beautiful well wishes. I just can't thank you enough. You're just very, very beautiful people. It's an absolute honor to know you and to call you my friends. I think it's just amazing. Your comments, the stories that you've shared, your well wishes have just absolutely touched my heart. I just want to thank you so much for being a part of what we're doing and being a part of the Crypto Trading KS community. Thank you so much. I haven't mentioned it the past couple of days, but I would like to thank everybody that's reached out and bought me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. I think it's just so lovely of you. And there's so many incredible comments in the community. There's so many in beautiful, beautiful people who have overcome such adversity. I love seeing those stories. As you can see, I do my absolute best to read every comment. I'm really loving what you share with me and how you look at life and how you look at crypto. It's really, really beautiful. I just posted in the community tab a little, I don't know, survey and just asking how you feel about crypto and Bitcoin today. Do you feel bullish or bearish or are you in cash waiting for a clear direction? I literally just did that then. I thought it could be really interesting.
To access that, you just go to the community tab of our channel. I just refreshed it and look, we've already had three votes. Please hop in there if you haven't done so already and let me know. I'd love to know what you think. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video if you think it will help others. Thank you to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. Please say hi and let me know where you're viewing from and if you have any questions. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.